Imagine yourself waking up tomorrow and noticing something different. You found yourself unusually sensitive to the law. And upon arriving at school, you met with the law test. Quickly scanning through the exam, you found that all the questions in your head simply made sense and the answers just come to you. But now you start pondering. I didn't even study that much. How is this even possible? So do I. Hey friends, welcome to the channel. My name is Sebastian. I'm a second year one next unit law student. And today I'm going to share with you how this secret technique and that is active learning has helped me to really score well in law exams without like spending all my time studying and like having no life. Yeah. Anyway, I know that all of us here are unique, so what I'm going to do is start off by sharing with you how I found this secret technique before explaining how you can incorporate this into your own study routine as well. Stay tuned to the end of this video if you really want to master the art of learning and see how that can transform your learning experience in law school. Growing up, I have never been that kid who really understood what efficiency means when it comes to studying. I vividly remember when I was in high school, like there's only like one, one, no or maybe three things I did, uh, the three things are like studying and studying and yeah, you get the idea. So when it comes to productivity, I thought the three metrics that measure productivity are the number of hours I spent, the number of chapters I covered, and the number of papers that I did. So it has really never come to my understanding that, okay, perhaps productivity could be measured by my ability to apply the concepts, my actual ability to do the paper. It has always been about the quantity and not quality. But somehow this actually did kind of, yeah, paid me off a little bit. So it got me into university with like somewhat of a decent good grades. And also I did have a scholarship, which is quite generous of my school to do that. But this really made me wonder, surely there must be some other way of studying that just don't burn me off and make me have no time for other things, right? You see, as a uni student, I don't just want to start my life to just studying and studying and studying. There are other things I want to do like say relax, hang out with people and meeting cute girls. Yeah. So at the start of the year, I would often miss out on lectures unintentionally. Sorry to those teachers in school who trusted me so much. But because I don't have time for three hour classes like what, four times a week, what I started to do was I tried to read the lecture slides and trying to understand what that concepts are talking about so that I can cover this content within a short amount of time. And holy shit, that was a life changing experience. So how does this active learning technique actually works? After realizing that I could condense 3 hour classes into like 30 minutes, I continued to practice this skill and try to hone it. You see, after all, law school is mainly about being able to solve sort of problem questions, something like this. And you need to see that big structure for you to actually get the big picture of what the question is about. And then after, you can do well. Obviously, there will be some sort of tiny details like case law and trying to consider both sides of the coin, all sorts of that kind of things. But it only works and it only adds value to your answer if you can see the big picture first. So having the structure and being able to really condense it into a big picture helped me so much. After this, I will search for past year papers with answers for the topic that I'm currently working on. What I will do is I will study the answers and then compare my notes to see how this section of the notes fit into the answers. And after that, I will have fairly a good understanding of what the question is talking about. And then if I have some sort of time, if I'm not that busy that week, what I will do is I will take out like some questions for the topic and actually sit down and just practice doing it. In this way, I'm able to have a good understanding of the topic I'm covering, have a good structure for how to approach that question, and also actually got some sort of practice to do questions for that topic. All of this within a very short amount of time. And ever since then, I never really have to look back because I was able to really just study for like what, four hours a week and have so much free time. So after then, I never really attended any classes or watched any live stream, but basically still understood every single concept. Now, funnily enough, there was actually this story that I really wanted to share. 
to show how active learning has impacted my life so much. Recently, we have this law ball and it was one of the best experiences in my life. I was rather tired after that night. We went home around 2 a.m. or so and I had a constitutional law tutorial class at 9 a.m. So that class requires class participation where there are marks awarded if you talk in class. But I didn't really prepare for that class because I don't have time. I'm kind of a bit lazy as well. So what I did was I entered into the class not knowing anything, didn't read the tutorial, didn't read the slides, basically nothing. And I was like, okay, I still need to get the mark. So I put out the lecture slides. The tutorial was about corporations power. And the tutor, I remember she posted this question on, what are the two factors that make it controlled under the constitutional power or something along those lines. And I just raised my hand. I was like, what am I even doing? I don't even know anything. But I just raised my hand intuitively because I had like a, what, a summary page in front of me. And I was like, okay, if I get caught and I'm able to read this out, I think I should be able to answer this question. And funnily enough, she just called me. She was like, okay, Sebastian, what's this called the two, two factors? And I was like, okay, okay, I can do this. So I just pulled out and I look at this. Okay, two things, just read it out. Hmm. Um, the, the, the two main issues are, first of all, you need to be controlled under the corporation's power and the second one is that, oh yeah, the scope, oh yeah, uh, the scope of the legislative regulation must be controlled under subsection 5120. And she was like, wow, that's an amazing answer. I was like, what the hell, I didn't even study anything and I just got it. So that's the thing, you see, if you incorporate, incorporate active learning, that is so easy to just like push it through your way and actually get the marks. But afterwards, I actually understood what it means as well. So try starting to read and really learn by yourself. Focus on active learning. All right, so at this stage of the video, I hope that you've gotten a clear understanding of how active learning has transformed my life. It has made me study faster, smarter, and smoke things through with more ease. Anyway, I think that there are two stages towards incorporating this into your own life. The first step is to get started with incorporating active learning. And the second step is to get good at mastering the art of studying less. Let's first talk about getting started. At this stage, you're essentially doing two things, getting into the habit of active learning and figuring out whether it works for you. It's just like a relationship. When you see a person that you really like, you don't just be like, oh, 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 you're so cute. I want to date you for the rest of my life. No, what you're going to do is you're going to go on a few dates with them. And then after that, you figure out, okay, maybe this person is for me. I keep going. If it's not for me, I try someone else. It's the same with this technique. I want you to give this technique a try first, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And if at the end of this stage you don't like it, that's fine, move on, find another study technique for you. But give it a try first. And here is my list of things that I want you to try. First of all, you should start reading your lecture slides, actively learning and not thinking about the time. You should do problem questions and don't just leave it till the last minute, like a few days before law school and panic. And you should perhaps form study groups so that you can talk to each other about the ideas. I would also challenge you to avoid these things that really drill passive learning into your system. One is taking notes, like becoming the secretary of the lecturer. No. Second, a bit controversial, but try to stop attending lectures. Why? Because when you attend lectures, you are listening to what the lecturer has saying. You are passively taking to the information. By you not attending lectures, you are forcing yourself to actually sit down, actively learn on yourself, on your own terms. You should also stop reading full cases. Like, who on earth has the time to read like 40 pages of cases like you could literally get that one sentence of the principle take it move on apply that in your law exam that's it you don't have time for that much it's still very passive to read that because your mind is telling you that okay i have to read this not because i want to read this so that i can use this for my exam 
The final thing that you could try to stop doing is actually to treat every single word of your professor like gold. Like there are a few friends around me who just be like, Oh, I emailed my professor and this is what he or she said. Oh, my professor said this, let me jot this down and highlight and highlight and highlight. Your professors are also reasonable human beings. Obviously they have more knowledge than you, but I try to challenge you to start to think about how can you make your own words like go? How can you find out that go within yourself? And that is true active learning. You should embrace the time of studying actively. And when you're not studying, relax and chill. And that's fine. You don't have to force yourself to study 40 hours a week. At the end of this stage, see what works and what doesn't work. Refine yourself and move on to the next stage of mastering the art of studying less. At this stage, you've gotten a good general understanding of what active learning is about and you want to become better at the art of studying less. So what you do is that you commit yourself for the next few months or even years to study actively and put aside the bad habits of studying passively. I'm not saying that you cannot read your notes and 10 lectures anymore from this stage, but what I suggest is that you try to think about it in terms of how I can learn this instead of how other people can help me learn this. In this way, you are processing your mind to really think about how I could actively learn. Another thing that you should do is to consistently try out new study methods that fit into the category of active learning and update your list accordingly. At the start of the year, there was this invention of ChatGPT and I absolutely fell in love with it. So what other people will do is to just discourage ChatGPT and be like, oh yeah, British academic integrity, oh it's unoriginal, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's that you know what I'm talking about. But ChatGPT has actually transformed my life. When I don't know how to do a problem question, for example, what I will do is I will take the structure of how to approach a problem question provided my, by my tutors. I'll take the question, I'll chuck in the question and tell ChatGPT, wait a moment. I will bring out the structure and tell ChatGPT to do it based on that structure. And in that way, I actually could literally see how the questions are to be answered and try to learn it myself as well. Obviously, there will be some sort of inaccuracies, but it's better than you getting stuck in the first place. Now, the invention of new technologies like ChatGPT is just like you meeting a new girl. You could either say that this new girl is too good for me and drift away, or you could embrace it and try to work on yourself so that she can enrich your life. It applies the same for ChatGPT. Embrace technology and not drift away. Here's another technique that I really love. Still like an artist. Now, I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say this phrase, good artists copy, great artists steal. What I'm saying over here is not for you to be like, oh, I'm going to breach academic integrity, or I'm going to hire someone to write my essays for me. Instead, you have to go and figure out, okay, this is a good article, journal article. Maybe this is a good piece of research essay. This is a good piece of model answer. And don't feel bad about taking ideas from that. Take the structure of the model answer, take the phrasing of that research essay, and really just churn it all together and make it even a better piece of work. Steal it and make it even better from your own. I think uh, there was this person, Stravinsky, he's a 20th century composer, and what he did was he listened to all those Baroque and classical composers, and he took the manuscript and he started composing the work using the bass line, writing new melodies as if the work is his own. And I think that's how he also became a famous 20th century composer. I think if you want to really master the art of studying less and become really, really good at law school, that's something worth trying as well. All right, friends, so that's the secret technique, active learning that I used to really help me master the art of studying less. I hope that you guys have taken something away from it. Remember, you have to get started with active learning first by trying to take away all the bad habits of passive learning and then slowly get good at active learning by figuring out what works best for you. And this is done through trying new different sort of studying techniques. If you enjoyed watching this video, feel free to check out this video as well on how I study four hours a week. Other than that, I will see you guys again. Bye.